वन इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू सी द फिशन एनर्जी एंड द नेचुरल इरानियम रिएक्टर दिस टू पॉइंट्स फ्रॉम द चैप्टर नंबर थ्री न्यूक्लियर रिएक्टर्स सो इनिशियल वी विल स्टार्ट विद द फिशन एनर्जी एज वी नो फिशन मीन्स वॉट द स्प्लीटिंग ऑफ टू न्यूक्लियाज एंड ड्यूरिंग द स्प्लीटिंग और ड्यूरिंग द बॉन्ड ब्रेकिंग लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी इज रिलीज एंड दैट एनर्जी इज नोन एज अ फिशन एनर्जी सो एज वी नो वेन दैट इज अ न्यूक्लियर फिशन द नंबर ऑफ आइसोटोव्स कैन बी अंडर गो फिशन एंड देर इज अ प्रोडक्शन ऑफ द डॉटर न्यूक्लियाज सो ड्यूरिंग ईच फिशन सम अमाउंट ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन्स आर इमिटेड and the isotopes will be generated and the energy will be liberated so we will see the fission energy each neutron induced fission of iranium nucleus releases a staggering amount of energy and each fission sets free on the average two or three neutrons as we know the neutron is used as a projectile and it will be bombarded on the target nuclear uranium and from that the daughter nucleus will be formed and there is a release of the energy and 2 to 3 neutrons for each fission and the magnitude of fission energy when a kilogram of uranium 235 gets completely fissioned that will be calculated as follows so during each fission of the uranium 235 the nucleus releases roughly around 200 mega electron volt energy and this is equivalent to nearly 1000 megawatt day per kilogram of uranium fission per day so the large amount of energy is released during the single fission and that will be around 200 mega electron volt energy and it is equivalent to 1000 megawatt then the calculation of the energy or the fission energy that will be done as it follows so for that the definition of an electron volt that is written here One electron volt is equal to one point six zero two into ten raised to minus nineteen volt or coulomb or joule, and the one fission is equal to how much energy is generated? Around two hundred mega electron volt. So just we have to convert this mega electron volt into the mega joules. So one electron volt is equal to one point six zero two into ten raised to minus nineteen. joules so just by applying this the equation will become one fission is equal to how much energy 3.204 into 10 to minus 17 mega joules since 1 kg of uranium 35 so when we use the fuel uranium 235 around 1 kg how much amount of energy will be generated from that that will be calculated as follows So uranium two thirty five will contain a magnitude number of molecules in one kg, and one kg is equal to how much grams? It is equal to ten raised to three grams divided by its mass. It is a two thirty five. So a magnitude number into mass in grams divided by two thirty five. This is a mass. It is equal to after finding the value of this, you will get this much value. 2.553 into 10 raised to 24. So when we burn one kg of the uranium 235, we will get this much amount of energy. So not energy. This is the atoms. Okay. Now we have to find out the energy. So this much amount of the atoms are present in the uranium 235. So one kg of uranium two thirty five will contain the average number of the atoms or the molecules in the ten raised to three grams divided by its mass. From that, we will get this value, and this is the value of the number of 
atoms of the uranium 235 in 1 kg. Now we will calculate the energy. So the fissioning of all these atoms. So in 1 kg how much amount of the atoms are present 2.5 into 10 to 24. So if one atom of the molecule produces the 200 mega electron volt per fission then this much amount of atoms will produce how much energy so that will be the total energy. So this energy is equal to 3.2 into 10 raise to 17 into 2.553 into 10 raise to 24 mega joules. So this 3.2 into 10 raise to minus 17 into 2.553 into 10 raise to, uh, 10 raise to plus 24 megajoules. So this first value is taken from this. One fission is equal to how much uh, megajoule energy produced? This much. So for one fission this much or one atom this much. So we have to find out for this much atoms how much amount of energy generated. So just multiply these two terms. 3.2 into 10 to minus 17 megajoule into number of atoms. So the calculation of this value will come 8.179 into 10 to plus 7 megajoules and if the kilogram of uranium 235 fissions during the course of one day so in one day there are 24 hours so uh, we can calculate this here so 8.17 into 10 raise to 7 divided by 24 into 3600 megawatt so power is equal to 950 megawatt so when we calculate this we will get the value 950 megawatt so from the 1 kg of the uranium 235 this much amount of the energy is generated so to produce this much of the energy 2.5 into 10 to 6 kg of the coal of the best quality would have to be burnt so as the Energy is produced by the different ways from the water, then from the nuclear energy production, then the energy can be produced from the wind. So there are so many methods to produce energy, but the nuclear energy production is the best way by which we can produce a large amount of energy. But this uranium-235 or the nuclear fuel that is not much abundant because the abundance of uranium-235 in the nature is only 0.072%. So that's why we can use the other sources for the production of the energy. So nuclear fuel is to coal that ratio is 1 is to 10 is to 6. So as we use the coal for the energy production nowadays so its quantity required is much higher that is a 2.5 to 10 to 6 kg and the uranium that required for the production of the same amount of energy around 950 megawatt that is only 1 kg so this is the fission energy of 1 kg of the uranium 235 so now we will see the natural uranium reactor so as we know the fission neutrons are of higher energy so neutrons are of higher energy and the lower energy there are two types of the neutrons but the fission neutrons are of higher energy and energy of that neutrons is in between 0.5 to 17 mega electron volt so this is the energy of the neutrons and the fission cross section of the uranium 235 for the fast neutron is very small and it decreases with the increase of the neutron energy so the fast neutron its fission cross section is very less and it decreases when the neutron energy is going to increase and the abundance of the fuel that is uranium 235 is very less and that is equal to 0.072 percentage 
so the fast neutrons and the thermal neutrons are there and the fast neutrons are the neutrons of the higher energy its energy it will be in the mega electron hole and the thermal neutrons are the neutrons whose energy is in the electron hole so as we know the naturally occurring uranium is present in the form of the uranium 238 also so uranium 238 its abundance is much higher it is a 99.28 percent and the neutron capture cross section for uranium 238 is very less it is a 0.01 bands so this small b represents the bands for two mega electron hold neutrons so the fast neutrons that will be converted into the thermal neutrons after passing through the uh, uranium in a matrix of an inert substance and that inert substance is known as the moderator and which slows down the fast neutron through a series of elastic collisions so moderator is a substance which is present in the nuclear reactor and that is useful for the conversion of the fast neutrons into thermal neutrons and that uh, moderator slows down the fast neutrons uh, through the certain collisions and that collisions are the elastic collisions so fast neutrons get converted into the thermal neutrons or the higher energy neutrons will be converted into the lower energy neutrons by the moderator substance then some neutrons are lost by the moderator material itself because there are the elastic collisions and uh, the energy exchange will occur there and the uh, neutron will get lost during the interactions or the during the interaction with the moderator material or the all of the moderator then the second loss of neutron by the resonance capture and the neutron at a definite energy around 6 electron hold by the uranium 238 leading to the formation of the trans uranians neptunium and the plutonium so as we know there is a trans uranic series and there is a formation of the neptunium and the plutonium from the uranium 238 so during that process there is a loss of the neutron occurs and the uranium 238 it is a fission nuclei it does not undergo the fission and the designing of a nuclear reactor must be such that a precise optimum and efficient use is made up of the fission neutron of each generation by minimizing the losses of all the factors so as we have said there are the fast neutron that will be converted into the slow neutrons then some neutrons will lost by the collision some will lost by the interaction with the wall of the container then uh, some will get, uh, get lost uh, during the transuranic series formation so this loss that will be minimized and then the reactor will be generated so that self-propagating fission chains from generation to generation become possible and at the same time an automatic control for the preventing over optimization must be built into the reactor so that the rate of energy release remains within limits without becoming exploding so as we know the nuclear reactions are the reactions in which higher energy of the isotopes will be re released so that released energy when this energy will become much higher then system will explode so that there is a use of the coolants moderators that can be done and there is automatic control on the system or the reactor and the first nuclear reactor that was designed and worked by Enrico Fermi in the University of Chicago using natural uranium as a fuel and the graphite as a moderator. So Enrico Fermi that scientist has prepared first nuclear reactor in the Chicago University and here he has used the fuel natural uranium and the graphite that is used as a moderator for con converting the fast neutrons into slow neutrons so this is about the natural uranium reactor and the fission energy